Hi everyone, I want to show you how to get the most out of your followers in Diablo 3. Followers are really important for solo play, especially for solo pushing, and uh, there are a few things that you should know about all three of them, because um, all of them are pr pretty viable choices and have their own advantages and disadvantages, and I want to show you what you need to know. Let's start. First of all, first of all we have two items that you will always have on the follower. Uh, one is the Immortality Relic, so um, this makes it so it cannot die, and uh, all three followers have their own relic for this. You should always have this because otherwise they will just get a one shot all the time and it don't really help you out much. Other than that, we have Oculus Ring. Oculus Ring is a must have on a follower. This is an 85% multiplicative damage boost. It's these little um, yellow circles on the ground. And um, you can have this while pushing like, most of the time when you time it a little bit and to try to kill something. This is very important to boost the DPS. With that out of the way, there are uh, some more important items. First of all, there's Unity. Uh, some builds are very squishy and they need Unity to survive. So what this does is when you put it on a follower and has this Immortality Relic, then your uh, follower will take no damage at all. And if you have a Unity and your follower has one, the damage taken is effectively halved. So like this, you double your toughness. And this is a very nice boost for a lot of builds that uh, require survivability. Another really important item is the S of Johan. Uh, this item is uh, very, very strong to make pulls for you, especially when your class doesn't have one by itself, and most solo builds don't. So uh, you can use a follower, and you can roll like attack speed rolls everywhere and so on to proc it more often. And like this, you can get these as your own procs. And um, this is very nice because like this, you can uh, use your AOE abilities more effectively. You can proc area damage and so on. And typically, you want to play around as your own procs a lot while solo pushing. So this is a very good item that you should generally have on your follower unless you are a class that makes their own pulls. Something like a Whirlwind Barbarian with Rage Flip or a Witch Doctor right now with Spirit Barrage with Perinado. You don't really want the Ezra Joan because that will mess with your own CC. But if you don't have that at all, then this is very, very nice. The cooldown on this item is 8 seconds. So this is the most at which it can proc. But if you have attack speed rolls on all of your items on the follower, uh, it actually happens relatively frequently. So um, anywhere between 8 and maybe 20 seconds or so is like the expected range. And you should definitely try to optimize your SSJOIN usage. Then for the weapon choice. For the Templar, a uh, very typical choice is the Thunder Fury. Thunder Fury has a slow proc, which is relatively decent, especially on builds that don't apply slurs very easily for Benefit Trapped. So this helps you out a bit because it jumps to the multiple enemies. And it also works, you know, like on a further distance because Benefit Trap has a very small range by itself. So it's like a small area around you that you slow, and with Thunder Fury you can actually slow further away targets through the Templar. This is very nice, especially on small poles or Rift Guardian, you will have almost permanent uptime, and this can help you out in some builds. One other combo I want to show here is this from my Witch Doctor right now. So this is what I mentioned with Perinado in this uh, solo Witch Doctor, and uh, here I have another weapon which is the Azeroth. Azeroth is a very strong item because it has high chance of freeze, and uh, you can roll something like this with lightning damage on it, like the thing is it always comes with cold damage because it's like a cold weapon, but you can roll the cold to lightning. And like this, you, it enables you to use Word Ward. Word Ward is another really good item that you can use as a ring, and uh, it has a chance to, to stun enemies when you deal lightning damage. And uh, this combo, and combined with the Dover Energy Trap that increases stun duration, you get um, a lot of CC, especially on Rift Guardians. So for single target CC, this is like the optimal setup pretty much. And uh, you like, you can interrupt bosses a lot, like Crusader King, for example, rarely spawns even any ads because he just gets interrupted on his ad spawn. Uh, he doesn't teleport away very much, uh, all these kind of things. And for Witch Doctor, for example, bosses are a huge problem. And I decided to go with this setup and uh, not the SO Johan on Thunder Free because I don't need to slow. I don't want SO Johan because I have Piranado. And this is like perfect because bosses are already such an issue and this really helps. For the Scoundrel, there's no melee weapons, so you have to go with a bow or a crossbow or something. So the typical weapon choice here is Cluck Eye. Cluck Eye uh, shoots um, some kind of like chickens when you shoot, and uh, these chickens, they will uh, stun enemies or like disorient them for like a, a second or so. And uh, combined with the abilities of the Scoundrel, you can actually make him into an insane CC machine. So um, this is something I used in, back in Season 3 when we still had permanent crowd control. And back then he was able to crowd control with guidance like 80% of the time or so. Um, now this is a little bit reduced because of crowd control resistance. But um, with like a clock eye and high roll and attack speed and cooldown rolls and so on, 
uh, you can definitely expect something like you know 40 plus percent uh, crowd control time on especially Rift Guardians. He can also crowd control um, multiple targets with uh, his uh, blind and so on. Just overall, Scoundrel is a really, really good um, crowd control follower if you're like struggling for survival and you don't really care about making big pulls and so on. It's a very, very good choice actually. For the Enchanters, uh, the Sultan of the Blinding Sand is usually a weapon to go because this also rolls with a lot of CC. It rolls up to 40% chance of blind and uh, it's very similar to the Azeroth that um, you, you just like perma blind almost uh, like certain single targets. And the good part about these single target CCs is they are uh, useful when you need the most, which is usually in the Rift Guardian, and they're not really um, hindering you so much in the Rift, because in the Rift usually you want to make your own pulls, you want stuff to follow you, you want the Azure Run procs, and not mess with the crowd control very much. But since these CCs are single target from Azure Wrath and Blinding Sand, you don't really mess up the CCs. There are some more items that you could use on a follower, but typically most of them don't really have an effect, uh, or they don't really work very well. One of them is Yun Yang Do. Uh, that was a good item uh, back in the early seasons when we had perma crowd control, because effectively the Rift Guardian would just stay frozen from 20% till dead, but this doesn't really work anymore. So um, you can use that, I wouldn't recommend it, but uh, it's, it, it's there. Um, other than that, you need to know that uh, followers don't deal any damage. They will, uh, they will never really help you with DPS. So uh, you should completely forget about you know their stats or whatever. You just give them for the utility. And also, you can't put legendary items on them. They don't work. So this is useless. And also, a lot of legendary item effects don't really work on them. So this is about it. There's like a few more art choices here and there, and, but typically they don't really benefit you in any way. This is the benefit for the items. So for the rolls, uh, just make sure you roll attack speed everywhere for Azure German procs or Azure Wrath procs and so on. Um, cooldown works on Templar and Scoundrel, but not the Enchantress for some reason. And this is about it. So typically you can you know, just equip the necessary items, maybe roll the lightning damage on Azure Wrath if you want to use that combo. Thunder Fury has the advantage, it always has lightning damage, so it's very easy to employ the, the word word effect. And uh, there you go. For the skill setup, uh, the Templar is usually there to help you out with healing. So we have the, the 30 second cooldown heal, it's basically another health potion and he uses that quite frequently. We have the uh, health region aura, uh, so this is definitely the two skills you should choose. There's also a taunt, I wouldn't recommend this at all, it just messes with your CC. We also have the slow. This is an option for um, builds that really don't have any way to apply slows for banter traps. So you could go with that because the life region is just you know like a little bit of extra healing, but this is also fine. On the third row, I would really suggest to take the um, like nothing or take this uh, the second skill because the first one is like some some stun, and um, it usually messes with the CDs as well, especially at the wrong time. This can like can be devastating for your area damage and so on. And then last row, I'd also just uh, recommend going with Inspire for um, extra extra resources and so on because you don't want to knock back from the last ability. The Enchantress is mainly there to give you an attack speed breakpoint. She has, uh, in the last row, she has this aura, 3% uh, increased attack speed, and this can help you out to reach the next breakpoint. I'm actually using Enchantress on my Demon Hunter because of this, because I need precisely 3% attack speed, and uh, this gives me another breakpoint, which is for me something like 6% DPS. So I happen to be quite lucky there with the attack speed values I have, and I basically cheated my way to a little bit higher sheet damage. Other than that, on the Shanters, make sure you don't put, put anything in the first row. Um, if you have a character and they already selected one of these skills, uh, Blizzard removed the ability to unlearn skills, um, I don't know when, if, like some seasons ago. So you have to level a new character if you want to use Enchantress without the first row. But generally, both of these skills are terrible. They are CCs and they just mess everything up usually, so you, you really want to avoid those. For the second row, uh, you can choose both, you can, like there's like a little defensive buff. I typically go with the first one for the range reduction, but the armor is perfectly fine. And um, on the third row, you take the erosion. You don't want um, the, the other stuff with this orient necessarily. And here's a scoundrel setup, um, you, you've seen this already, so you can go for even more uh, CC with the slow. You have the blind, you have a stun L enemies. So uh, Scoundrel is really the, the big CC follower. So in case you really need to uh, CC enemies, or perhaps you want to use the, the stun for something like a Frenzy Barb, 
uh, to deal more damage because of the the set bonus or for heaven's fury crusader maybe you want to get a random blind here and there to deal more damage if you have in series so um you know this are some things you can use but typically there's not really a place for scoundrel i have rarely used him in the last few years but he's definitely useful especially on the lower end i'd say because of the crowd control when you when you don't care about making big pulls scoundrel is a pretty good choice so with this i've covered pretty much everything there is to know about followers and how to optimize them i hope you liked it and it's going to help you out and i'll see you guys next time